So you've done all this work to create your host pools and your WBD environment. You don't want to ruin a good thing. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Backup and disaster recovery are the subject of this episode, and by the way, they are not the same thing. Backup is where we recover data in place, and disaster recovery is where we recover data in another place. And if you've followed along with each video in the AZ-140 series, then you've done most of this work already. We have three resource types we need to protect in WVD, and that is our operating system images, FSLogix profiles, and our session host virtual machines. Our images should be pretty simple, so let's go through that one first. If you're using a Microsoft Gallery image, there's nothing for you to do. Those images are already in every region, so all you need to do is build new VMs in your DR region, and you're good to go. But what about your custom images? In episode 14 of our series, we covered the Azure Image Builder. And when you use AIB to create your images, they're gonna be stored in an Azure Shared Image Gallery. This allows you to replicate your new custom images to any region you want. And the other critical thing about custom images is the number of replicas. You see, with custom images, there's a limit to 20 virtual machines that you can create from a single replica at the same time. So if you want to build 200 virtual machines in disaster recovery, you need 10 replicas of your image in that region. And you should have already completed that process with me in episode 14. If not, go and check that out and get it all set up. So assuming that you're good there, we can move on to the second topic, and that is FS Logix profiles. And how you back up your profile depends on the storage options that you've selected. Now, the three supported scenarios for FS Logix are a Storage Spaces Direct File Server, Azure NetApp Files, and Azure Files. And if you're using a file server instead of a file service like Azure Files and NetApp Files, please comment down below because I'd love to talk to you about it. And for now, all I'll say on that topic is that you should be using Azure Backup to protect the virtual machine and the MARS or Microsoft Azure Recovery Services agent to protect things inside the operating system. As for why, comment down below if that's you and we'll talk through the whole situation. For the rest of you, you're using Azure Files or NetApp Files and there are two different ways to protect your data in those situations. First is snapshots. The second is replication. Snapshots are a point in time backup that you can do in both of these services. And you can see here that in NetApp, you just go to snapshots on the left, create a new snapshot, type something up here in the box and your snapshot is done. And for NetApp or Azure files, you get the additional option within Windows to go to recovery here and then just pull out the files that you want out of your snapshot. For Azure files in particular, you can do this in the storage account directly, but I recommend instead using Azure Backup. So let's create a vault. And I'm doing this in our Japan resource group, where at the top we'll just click Add. And then we want to type Backup and select Backup and Site Recovery. Give your vault a name and make sure that the region you're deploying it in is the same region where your resources are that we're going to protect. Hit next and add the appropriate tags as usual, and then hit create. That'll be done in a minute, and when it is, at the top here, you want to click on new backup. Your resource type will be located in Azure, and you want to protect a Azure Files share. So now we need to select our storage account up here, and then from the picker, select the appropriate account, and that will onboard the storage account to Azure Backup. Then you just need to click over here and check the box for the file shares that you want to protect and hit OK. And then we have the backup policies. By default, this will take a snapshot for me every day at 7.30 p.m. And you can certainly edit the policy if you want to so that you have more options for weeks, months, years. And by the way, you can retain the backup data for up to 10 years for any single recovery point. But the default is fine for me today. So just click Enable Backup down there at the bottom and you're ready to roll. 
Just remember to repeat these steps in your other regions so that you can protect your FSLogix and MSIX app attached file shares. So now that we've talked through the backup strategy, let's talk about disaster recovery strategy where we need to get into replication. And there's really two layers to think about here as well, the Azure layer and the profiles themselves. On the Azure layer, Azure files and NetApp files implement things a little bit differently. Azure Premium files, which we're recommending that you use in production, has only two replication types, locally redundant storage and zone redundant storage today. So that's not going to help us get our data to another region. We would need another process for that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Meanwhile, ANF has a feature called cross-region replication. And I've got a lot more things to get into in this video, so if you're interested in cross-region replication, give me a comment down below and we'll have a chat. So I'm gonna skip over the Azure layer because I prefer to protect things at the profile layer. And we've already covered how to do this back in episode eight, where we talked about the best practices for FS logics and how we're configuring things for cloud cache instead of the default, which is VHD locations. And the main reason for this is because cloud cache lets you replicate your profiles to up to four different replication points. And that means it basically functions like a DR tool naturally. This works by setting up a connection string to your file share, and it looks something like this. Type equals SMB comma connection string equals the location of your file share, which in the case of Azure files would be your storage account name, dot file dot core dot windows dot net slash the name of the share so that's one replication point and just to make it disaster recoveryable if that's even a word then you add more strings by adding a semicolon and then you just repeat the same connection string and it would look something like this as to how you implement this well that's done either in the registry which you can see over here or through group policy over here on the left and I have covered this in other FS Logix videos in depth already. So if you want more, go check that out or in the link in the video description below about cloud cache resiliency. But there's a lot more to cover, so we gotta move on. The last thing that we need to protect is our session host virtual machines. As you know, there are two different types of host pools, personal and pooled. And we should think about them in two different ways. Personal host pools are somebody's personal computer. So they need to be backed up. And in general, we don't use FS Logix with personal host pools because the whole purpose of it is that they only log on to that VM. They're not jumping around from machine to machine like you do in pooled. So no FS Logix needed. But we do have to back it up because there's no other way to protect their profile from data loss, corruption, ransomware, etc. So let's get them protected with Azure Backup. So at the top, go ahead and hit the Add Backup. And just like we did before, we're going to select an Azure workload and this time virtual machines. You can edit the backup policy just like you did before, then select your virtual machines that you want to protect, click OK, enable backup, and it's as simple as that. And all of that was really the easy stuff. The rest of this video is gonna focus on the different disaster recovery options for your different host pools. And in personal host pools, there's only one way to do it, Azure Site Recovery. This is going to replicate your personal VMs from your primary region to your disaster recovery region. And to do that, we need to build another recovery services vault. But unlike our backups that was located in Japan, this one needs to be located in another resource group in the target region, which is East US. So here we are in my spoke WVD resource group where I've already created a recovery services vault. And we'll just click on that and scroll down on the left to site recovery infrastructure. And we'll start right at the top with our network mapping. Here's where we select the virtual network and region where our source VMs are located and where the target is for disaster recovery. Once you've finished with that, click OK. And back in the main section of the site recovery infrastructure, go ahead and select your replication policies. This is where we're setting up those RTO, RPO, which is recovery point and recovery time objectives. The default here is that the recovery point will be retained for 24 hours and we will take four snapshots within an hour. 
and those defaults are okay with me, but change them as you feel you need to. And back to the main overview screen of ASR, we're ready to protect our virtual machines. So click Enable Site Recovery at the top, and then you can see here the three different kinds of resource types you can protect, Azure VMs, VMware, and Hyper-V. And we of course want the Azure VMs on the left, and then select right over there, number one, Enable Replication. Select your source region and subscription resource group where your VMs are located and click Next. And then select the VMs related to this workload. And our workload today, of course, is personal VMs in our host pool. And then when you're done with all that, you'll get this report that'll say exactly what's going to happen. Notice that we'll have a new resource group created in the East US as well as a storage account. This storage account is where all of the disks that are on our Japan VMs are going to be replicated to and staged so that ASR can spin up new VMs from them. We've also got our target network selected and then at the bottom our replication policy, which all looks good to me. And when you're ready, click enable replication at the bottom. Now the one thing you need to be aware of when doing Azure Site Recovery and replicating your VMs from Japan to East US or wherever it is that you're doing them is that the VMs will be exactly the same machines as was in your source region. This means when they come up during a disaster that they'll still be joined to the host pool located in the primary region. And that should generally be okay, but what happens if this is a real disaster and Japan's not there anymore? Or there's a problem with WVD or the Azure control plane and you can't manage anything over there anymore? Well, this leads us into how we also would protect our pooled host pools. See, we don't need ASR to protect our pooled VMs and we don't need to back them up. Why? Because they don't contain any data. Pooled VMs are just an operating system that comes from your image and your user's data comes from the profiles. So does that mean you can't use ASR for your pooled VMs? Well, no, you certainly can, but why would you? Generally speaking, pooled VMs are just disposable. I mean, think about it. When your user logs on to a pooled host pool, does it matter which VM they land on? No, it doesn't, because their data is stored in their FSLogix profiles and that follows them around on whatever VM they land on, and the apps were installed from the image or something like MSIX app attached, so every host in the pool is identical. So if you lose a host in the pool, no big deal. You just spin up another one and everything's back in business. Now, if you disagree with the way I look at it, please comment down below and let me know what you think I'm missing. So I don't back up pooled VMs and I don't protect them with ASR. So how do you deal with pooled VMs in a disaster? Well, we've got two options and which one you choose depends on how big of a disaster you're protecting against. Your images will already be replicated to your DR region, build other virtual machines in your DR region, join them to your host pool, set up your connection strings for cloud cache to use the DR region as the primary and your original region as its secondary. So when the disaster is over, everyone can just log back on as normal and all their data is updated and then just leave them powered off until the disaster happens. And so the last thing for this episode is true regional disaster recovery. This is where something like, you know, the East US is just gone. First of all, that's horrible. Your images have already been replicated into that region and you have your storage all set up and your policies configured for cloud cache. And what you need now is a new host pool in a disaster recovery region. Let's say West US and then build your session host from your replicated image and then configure cloud cache on those VMs appropriately. The one downside to doing things this way is that you now have a new host pool, which means you have a new app group. And that means that your users will have a new icon that they have to click in their client to start a session on their DRVMs. And you can set that icon up in two different ways. You can just name it as a DR icon, you know, like DR desktop or something like that. Or you could put that icon in a separate workspace that's labeled disaster recovery. That way your users can understand which icon they should use on a regular basis and which one they use in a disaster. 
Once everything is built, I would just deallocate those virtual machines in your disaster recovery region since you don't need them today and hopefully will never need them. Just don't forget again to include them in your monthly update processes. That way, they're always good to go when you need them. Speaking of good to go, I'm sure that you're good to go to check out the next episode in the AZ-140 study guide right over here, where we're going to take a deep dive on all the automation stuff you'll need for the test, or you can jump to the latest Azure Academy video up top. Thanks for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy learning.